Hello and welcome to the video today. As we do in this series, we follow Nurgil Salimova's journey at the Women's Candidates Tournament in Toronto, Canada, and we join her here in round four, where she plays Humpy Conero, a legend of female chess, especially in the last decade, and a very formidable opponent. Um, before this game, both players have played three games. Humpy has one and a half points out of three, and Nurgil one point out of three. So they're at the, towards the middle and the bottom of the pack of this eight player tournament. And both of them would be hoping for a great score in this game in order to stay in contention for the top places. Let's dive straight into the action. Before we start with the moves, this is a fair warning that this video, since I really loved that game and I thought it was brilliant and there is a lot to learn from it, uh, will be quite long. So it will be a very TLDR video. Please feel free to skip and jump to critical moments that uh, you might feel, but I'm not going to... Yeah, I'm not going to try and keep it short because I think there was a lot of cool moves that uh, deserve some attention and um, hoping to do a more thorough analysis on this one. So, Nurgil starts with d4, met with knight f6, c4 and then e6. Very standard stuff so far. Nurgil opts for what is called the Catalan defense which is one way of dealing with the first two moves of black, which are called, obviously, the Nimzo uh, Indian defense. So we have uh, d5 from black, and Nurgil opens to uh, the, the spot g2 to g3 for her bishop, which is called the Catalan defense. This defense is characterized by being quite solid, so we don't expect any fireworks early in the game, but both players will have a nice, solid start uh, opening which will allow them to develop their pieces uh, as they as they want. And what we see here is Nurgil proceeding with the plan, bishop to g2, and here comes the first very interesting move that uh, uh, that Humpy played. Typically what players do in this position, and the whole setup is uh, setup's go, is to castle early, and most players, most professional players at the top level would castle here. There are other alternative moves that are also good, although really over 90% of games would have castle here on move 5. Uh, you could play something like um, c5, for example, to challenge for dominance in the center and attack this pawn. You could also um, capture the pawn on c4 and then trying to hold on to that black pawn. So there are many options, but what Humpy did is something extremely surprising, which is to play knight to e4. So on many levels, this is a surprise. Not only it is not in any database as a popular move, but also it violates basic principles of chess, which states that you should develop all of your pieces before moving a piece twice, unless there is a very specific reason. And in this position, there is no reason whatsoever to put the knight on e4, apart from uh, Humpy basically declaring her intention that she will attack uh, Nurgil, and that kind of she wants to tell her, I know I'm the better player, so I will outplay you in a position that I'm sure you have never faced before. So very interesting choice by Humpy and really going out of the convention and out of, for sure, Nurgil's preparation in the Catalan defense. Nurgil continues with uh, castling, which uh, the knight didn't in any way endanger, so it's a very logical move. And now we have another very interesting move, very solid attacking move, uh, which is f5. So notice that what uh, Humpy has done is she has gained quite a strong dominance on the light squares of the board with these three pawns and she's protecting very well her knight on uh, on e4 and it's not really easy to kick out this knight because already this pawn has moved two squares up so you cannot attack the knight with the pawn uh, you could attack it of course by offering exchanges or later playing f3 but this will slow down the development and the ideas that uh, Nurgil had um, and that's why I think it's very starts to become very clear and very obvious how on move six already can be showing a very concrete plan, which is to stack the center with pawns, so to close the position on the center, but give herself space to attack on the side where Nurgil castled. So definitely very interesting. Computer doesn't really like it, as you can see. It's already 0 0.6 for Nurgil, which means that so far, out of the opening, the computer thinks Nurgil will be able to withstand this attack. But how to do it is interesting because it's never happened before. So Nurgil uh, creates some space to develop her bishop and Humphrey develops her knight to c6. So the next move is the next really critical and interesting move that Nurgil plays. Here she could play uh, a very normal move like developing her bishop 
on this long diagonal uh, to B2, which is a very standard and move that makes sense. Or she could potentially develop her queen to C2. Both of these moves are good, but they lack kind of a concrete, specific, strategic idea. So I really loved her next move, mainly because um, of its strategic value, which is bishop to a3, which looks very silly. And it's not typically a good idea to develop the bishop on this square. Usually you want to develop them from the starting blocks on the long diagonal or behind the pawn, as she did with her light square bishop. But why is this move good? It is because, um, as we mentioned before, Humpy is very strong on the light squares. Uh, but she's not strong at all on the dark squares. So one of the pieces that she really needs to keep on the board is her black, uh, sorry, dark squared bishop, which is currently under attack by Nurgil. So Nurgil's idea is I want to take this bishop and when both dark squared bishops are off the board, Humpy is left with a really badly placed bishop that's behind its own wall of pawns that she herself decided to build. So in that case, uh, taking this bishop here would be a mistake for Humpy. It would also help Nurgil get the knight out of its key square and help it on its journey to probably the best square for this knight in this position, which is in a few moves to be able to get to d3. So this is why this move was really cool. It is again a move that is out of any preparation. We're out of prep anyways at the moment. And let's see what Humpy did. She declined the exchange, wanting to keep this dark square bishop on the board because she really needs it since her pawns are not helping her control the dark squares. Okay, who knew that the Catalan can have such an exciting start after just eight moves? Um, Humpy continues with her attack on the king side, uh, playing h5. So al al already she will try to push really hard. The computer doesn't believe her, as you can see, it puts uh, a dead equal sign at the moment. So uh, the computer believes Nurgil can withstand the attack, but how she's going to do it, or whether she's going to do it, it remains to be seen. She decides to take back her knight from uh, f3 to d2, offering an exchange of knights, as her knight here is clearly not as strong as attacking as this knight. She believes that it's good to exchange them, and of course that makes a lot of sense. What we have here is Humpy declining to uh, take the knight, because at least she doesn't want to waste a move and blink first by taking the knight and wasting a move, helping Nurgil develop her other knight. So what she does is play h4, continuing her attack on the king side. And here we have Nurgil taking the knight. And we pause for another interesting choice and dilemma, which is with which pawn should Humpy retake here? Uh, pause for a sec if you want and have a look so that um, maybe you can test your strategic thinking. She could take with both D and F pawns, but one of them is clearly much better. All right, so what Humpy did was uh, take with the D pawn, and that is indeed the correct move. Taking with the F pawn actually would close a bit further the position on the center and will attack, uh, will allow Nurgil to uh, prepare better defensively. It will allow an early play on F3, and overall, the, um, it will allow better defense for White. So, what Humpy wants to do is direct more resources towards the king side, an extra point going from D file towards where the king is and opening some key squares for the queen to later swoop in. Uh, so taking with the d pawn was the correct choice between the, the two choices that at the first glance seem quite uh, quite like it's all the same which one to, to, to choose to take with. Uh, we have a development of the knight, finally I would say, from uh, b1 jumping off to, this, uh, to c3. And here we have a continuation of the attack. So Humpy relentlessly goes and uses her h-pawn in order to break down the defenses of Nurgil. And it's starting to look a bit scary because now the rook has full scope on the h-file where the king is. So it is definitely an unpleasant situation for the white king. However, what's good for Nurgil in this position is there isn't a quick way for the queen to also start creating um, further danger for the king. It would take at least two to three moves to get there, so Nurgil has some time to prep her defenses. As you can see, the queen also starts moving for black pieces, and now Nurgil moves her rook on a1 uh, to c1. Uh, at first I was a bit surprised about this move, because when I looked at this game with the computer, I thought it's time to play f3 and give your king a chance to escape, because it's starting to get a bit hectic uh, on the king side. 
computer thinks that rook c1 is also just as good as f3, which is interesting. And I think the key ideas here are that moving the rook to c1 allows you first to escape this nasty pin that might arise in the future on the knight. So it gives you extra mobility. It also protects the knight, which means that in some situations where needed, this pawn can now move and the knight, which was unprotected in this, at the, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the knight was unprotected until this point, it's now protected by the rook. So it's, uh, again, uh, whilst it's uh, a move on the other side of the board and looks it has nothing to do with the defense, it actually has a lot to do with the defense and the computer likes that move. We have queen moving closer and closer to the white king. Notice that whilst it looks really scary, Nurgyu currently has control with one piece on all of these squares. Queen could not jump in any way to h4 because of the pawn. If it jumps to h5, it will be exchanged, which is obviously good for the defender, not the attacker, which is in this case uh, Nurgil. And uh, it could jump here, but it will require further moves in order to do that. So we have queen to f7, coming closer to the attack. And now we have f3, which challenges this strong point, uh, strong pawn on e4, and also allows the king to move to f2 and escape and fly to safety if needed. Uh, we have uh, takes and takes with the queen. So Nurgyu manages to complete development and move all her pieces off their starting place, whilst Humpy is still quite underdeveloped on the queen side and has not even castled yet. And kind of, uh, she has accepted not castling by even starting this whole pawn attack on the king side. And uh, she's very aware that she doesn't even want to castle towards the king side herself. She's not allowed to also because the bishop covers that square, but she wants to keep her rook on the h file in order to create this massive pressure on the king. But whether she's going to be able to castle on the queen side and bring another rook into the attack remains to be seen because that would be ideal for her. We've got bishop going to d7 in order to, of course, allow for further development, and it's the only square that you can develop the bishop in one move. And now Norgil plays knight to b5, which is, I would say, the first really attacking move of Nurgil. Obviously, the direct threat is going to f uh, to c7 and uh, forking the king and the rook. Uh, Humpy is not going to fall for that, but it's not so obvious how to defend. Because in an ideal world, she would castle, and that would both defend the pawn with the king, uh, and also move the rook on the side of the attack. But if she did that, uh, Nurgil has this very nice move, bishop to d6, um, which uh, cannot be taken at the moment, because um, if you did that, uh, I'll actually play it out for you, even though the, the board will turn a bit paler when you start going into variations, but if you did that uh, move, the computer really starts favoring white, as you can see on the left-hand side, and uh, you can play bishop to d6, which uh, a pro player being in that situation would not even take, because taking it would be terrible, since you have a nice, basically, end of the game where you win the queen. But in any case, it, you won't be able to defend that pawn because you're not able to take the bishop, etc. So it is definitely something that will bring the game close to winning for white already. So let me just refresh in order to... I don't like the pale board. Uh, so we're going back to, uh, to the position. Um, let's go back to where Nurgyo played uh, knight to e4. And... Humpy def defends the pawn with the rook, so she gives up her right to castle on this side as well. And she defends the pawn on c7 by playing rook from a8 to rook to c8. Uh, we have Nurgil centralizing her rook, and the queen moves further and further towards the king. But you see all these moves take one square, so it's not a very quick attack. Whilst Humpy started with a really powerful attack, now it's uh, she has wasted too much time and allowed Selimova to defend well. We have knight going back because uh, the purpose of that knight going to b5 was kind of to ruin the queen side development. It did its job there, so now it is needed actually also for the defense in some other place. It doesn't have further scope to attack anything here. Defended pawn on a7, defended pawn on c7. Cannot really play here. It's not really a good idea to uh, do a sacrifice there for any reason. So it actually is really needed somewhere else on the board. We have Humpy moving her king to f7 connecting the rooks and allowing the rook on c8 to later join the attack and the knight can, comes further to the aid of its king going to e2 queen and rook align at the moment this allows a check on uh, h2 of course it wouldn't be checkmate nurgil has long prepared f2 when necessary 
uh, to leave to leave the danger area for the king and uh, she does not feel like she has to preemptively move the king instead she starts developing in the center by playing e4 another attacking move by Kampi, uh, adding another pawn to the attack playing g5 and here Nurgul uh, decides to leave with the king and it's not an easy move to find because you never want to really move your king when you can have much more attacking moves and the whole point is you castle to go to safety but actually the king has been feeling very uncomfortable in the last 10 or so move in the castle position so Nurgil decides that actually being on uh, a little bit more on the f file or even later at the e file will be actually safer for the king than where the castle was so that's why she plays king to f2 and also this allows her rooks now to challenge for that h file we have um, a very opportunistic i would say g5 to g4 by Humpy. so she now attacks the queen but actually that kind of ruins her position and as you can see the computer really doesn't like that move what the computer wants to do here is play queen to h5 and basically say i give up on my attack i admit that this attack is not going to really to a win for black exchange the queens and uh, life goes on so basically it is very anti psychological compared to how Humpy was feeling for 20 moves so that would be a very difficult move to find and also it just uh, requires huge admitting of your ego uh, to be reduced and to play the best move not the move that's consistent with your whole philosophy for the game she doesn't do that she does the more aggressive g4 but after Nurgil moves the queen to safety it turns out that um, that Humpy's attack is uh, has really failed and now Norgir is just simply better developed she doesn't have a um, uh, material advantage in any pieces or pawns but she's just better developed so um, she Norgir moves her king fully to safety computer doesn't like it it wants uh, Norgir to first capture the pawn but I kind of understand why she wants to not stay on this relatively exposed, uh, relatively exposed f file so she moves king to e1 and again uh, both players have an idea one wants to really achieve full safety and the other one does not want to give on the attack so what Humpy should do here is still realize that actually she's in the one in the worst position and play king out of safety uh, here to g8 because with the move um, king to e1 what Norgul does is whilst it looks like the most defensive move ever she opens an attack on this king which is something that Humpy should probably deal with but she's not in the mood for that so she plays king to g7 which looks a little bit less defensive and passive than moving it to g8 also you uh, you just look like you're more in the game with that move now we've got um, bishop takes e4 uh, as you can see the position is very complex and the computer constantly gives these x's for like missed best move etc norgio still has a massive advantage after bishop takes e4 and it's a very logical move you regain material you open a very nice attacking diagonal what the computer wants to do is um, bishop to c1 retreating and attacking the queen since currently the queen is in a very very vulnerable position as the king has blocked some of its flight this can be a challenged line with a rook and um, computer it's all about move order here so it's quite complex i don't pretend to understand it i mean if Nurgil didn't find it what's we'll it there for me for a few minutes trying to analyze but after uh, after this move she's still quite ahead and again humpy does not want to admit that king g8 is still the best move and then retreating further with the queen to g7 no she plays queen to g5 staying a bit more relevant and closer to the white pieces um, and now Nurgil plays a very good move seeing retreating moves that are actually offensive is always super difficult in chess because you want to go forward and attack you don't want to move back but uh, that's what she did and the queen really has no good spaces to go as you can see it's really restricted it doesn't want to go to the um, h file where a rook could come here and attack it and that's a defended rook by a bishop so Kumpi has to face the choice between playing a really bad move that looks attacking or playing the best move which just looks horrible which is to go to a5 she did that and offer an exchange of queens um, earlier we mentioned that the attacker does not want to exchange queens here Nurgyu has turned already into the attacker so what happened over the last few moves is from the desire of not letting the attack go Humpy worsened her position so much that now she had to do 
what she had to do way earlier, which is exchange the queens, but now she's in too bad of a position. So now exchanging the queens doesn't really bother Nurgil. Computer thinks it's plus three for Nurgil, which means that even though there is no pawn advantage to her, computer thinks she's like three pawns ahead. So her black king is very exposed. All the white pieces are coordinated to go towards it. And there is so much free space that actually over a few moves, it turns out that Nurgil can make better use of. So what? What a uh, critical five moves between 20 and 25 to lead to that position where Humbi had to actually uh, beg for an exchange of queens, and it's too late anyways for that. We've got rook to, a, uh, to f4 attacking the pawn. It's not easy at all to defend that pawn, um, and um, uh, Humpy plays, uh, tries to remain aggressive, goes rook to h2, wants to create uh, trouble uh, in the camp of white we have rook takes g4 check and king goes to uh, h8 so all of, a look, all of a sudden it looks really unpleasant for white it's still not easy to win though because there are many defensive resources there is still a lot of pieces on the board and after rook g6 and bishop uh, g7 uh, we have um, uh, continued attack by nurgil i just want to go back to this situation because something very interesting happened here i was watching some of the game live and during the live game, we had a Grandmaster and an IM discussing the game, obviously. And they both looked at the move Knight to F4 with the idea to come and check it and add an extra piece that it doesn't have a big scope, which is the Knight, to the attack. And even in those situations, you need to be precise because Knight to F4, which is something that two Grand uh, Masters of the game suggested instantly, it doesn't work. It actually leads to a straight drawn position because you can just open with um, pawn to e5, attacking the rook. And even if you check, then the king will just come here. And um, what will happen is you will end up losing the rook or you will allow black to take another piece. And uh, all of a sudden, you'll be back to square one. So even in this position, even when it says plus four, it doesn't mean it's easy. And this is what really impressed me with Nurgil, that so far she has played already four or five moves where we paused, looked at them and thought they were quite genius and required such concentration and going against the flow of the game and she found them and she kept finding the best move computer says play uh, rook to g6 she plays g6 computer says play bishop to f4 what does she do plays bishop f4 etc etc so she was very very accurate again the game is quite complex so i'm not going to go through all the variations which would require for me at least a lot of study to go through it but in any case she did not fall for any of the defensive traps for Humpy for the foreseeable future. Here again, um, she continues the pressure and uh, forces basically Humpy to retreat. And um, in the next few moves, she continues basically to really suffocate the Black King. Uh, again, this just proves to me what what, what masters do in, in uh, chess. Like I'll give you an example here. Um, I would uh, normally just uh, try to exchange my bishop for this knight at any time because I would split these pawns and I would think that that will make my end game easier but it also simplifies the game and gives black fighting chances so I keep expecting computer to suggest exchange your bishop for the knight but that is a very uh, you know very low low skill move um, as you can see in this position the bishop is finally gone away from protecting the knight so you could do what I was suggesting but computer does not suggest it it suggests to play bishop f4 Nurgil plays that etc. So basically, um, what, uh, what what is going on here is uh, Hump is really running out of resources. As you can see by now, Nurgul is two pawns up. So um, there is little that can be done by, uh, by Black at this moment to stop. And uh, we have quite a technical 20 move endgame now, which uh, resulted in the final position. There isn't anything that, uh, I mean, the technique of Nurgil is amazing, but there isn't anything wow here because she simply does what she's supposed to do in these positions and uh, manages to keep two pawns relatively advanced on both sides of the board and her pieces are very active, whereas the Black King is cut off. And if you can learn anything, if you're still listening to this video from this position is that when you have a rook, you want to use it to cut off in end games the King on the back rank. So she has all of her pieces extremely active now, which leads to Humpy resigning very soon in this position. So amazing win by Nurgul, especially after losing in round three and against a very experienced player, a player that started attacking from 
the first moment and probably thought Nurgil was very vulnerable after losing and will crumble under the pressure, but no, Nurgil found amazing ways to escape with her king, found when to retreat her pieces in order to become more attacking, found how to, I guess, exploit the fact that Humpy was in attacking mood and she did not offer changing queens when she had to. Later, Humpy was forced to change queens when it was too late. It was the best move, but already Nurgil was in a much better position. So ultimately, on move 62, Humpy resigns and there is nothing that she can do here. As you can see, already the computer is saying plus 40 and if we let it calculate to unlimited depth, it will announce mate probably in 20 or so moves, I would expect, because um, the price to stop this pawn promoting uh, after a few moves and after a few potentially checks to, to the white king, it will move further into safety and you have to sacrifice your rook for just this pawn. Um, so there is nothing that really she can do by now. And even if we have an extra pawn, there is also constant threat of checkmate coming even with the figure, even with the pieces that are on the table. So overall the game is lost. And the final thing I wanted to say is if we go back to some of the moves that require to be very precise, what you can see on the left side of the on the left side of the screen is the player's times. And a lot of these moves Nurgil made with under a minute, sometimes even under 30 seconds on the clock, and you do get 30 seconds when you play a move. But still, to be so accurate whilst basically being in a blitz game, I found it absolutely incredible. So definitely the most enjoyable game of the tournament for, for Nurgil that I have covered. Um, and uh, also very happy that she's winning and now sharing, I believe, third to fifth place with two points. So she's absolutely back in the tournament after a negative result in round three. Okay, I think that's a wrap. Very excited to uh, cover the future games of Nurgil. We'll tune in tonight to game five, which is going to be also a very exciting game. Um, so thanks very much to everyone. And let me know what you thought of this game. Absolutely amazing stuff. Bye.